Hello and welcome to Phonerina ZDEF video review of the Samsung Flight, the SGH A797 for AT&T. Last year we saw the Samsung Propel uh, come out as a text messaging oriented device. This time around we have the uh, Flight which integrates two new two new things, a touch screen and also a slide out portrait QWERTY keyboard. We'll see if it has what it takes to be a really decent uh, text messaging device out there. The Flight's design doesn't really scream anything too appealing. The materials that they use is this silver plastic that emulates a metallic finish to it. It does look nice, but you definitely feel the uh, plasticky nature of the device. Same thing goes with the uh, materials that they use on the front cover, the uh, silver, almost milled aluminum look to it. Uh, as far as size though, it's a little bit thicker and bigger than most phones, and also with that it's accompanied a little bit hefty weight to it. Um, we do like its construction, it feels solid all around, and also including when you open up the uh, device to reveal the QWERTY keyboard. When compared to the uh, Propel, it, it, the uh, Flight definitely has a larger screen because it's a touch screen this time. It's 2.8 inches in size and has a resolution of 320 by 240 uh, with support for up to 262,000 colors. It's modest as we'd say, it's uh, nothing really fancy out there, it's easily legible to read text and colors for the most part look pretty decent. Uh, right below that is, are your hardware buttons, your send and and also the back, back or clear key. Uh, on the side you have your micro USB port for charging connected PC, your volume rocker, your quick menu, and on the other side you have your dedicated button for your camera application and also the lock on lock button. Um, when you turn over to its back you have the uh, 2 megapixel camera with the speakerphone and when you remove the back cover it will give you access to the battery, the SIM card slot, and of course the sliding mechanism for the uh, micro SD card slot. We definitely like the uh, opening and closing mechanism of the phone. It has a really snappy feel to it. Now the uh, four row QWERTY keyboard buttons are slightly raised from the surface. There's no, there's barely any spacing in between it and it's really cramped. People with larger fingers will have probably a harder time getting, trying to press the buttons. It's made out of plastic and does have a decent tactile feel to it. It's usable but not really the best out there just because because of the, uh, the cramped feeling of the uh, QWERTY keyboard. Now the Samsung Flight almost has a touch wish feel to it, but doesn't really utilize the full interface we've seen on most touchscreen handsets from Samsung. You have the home screen with some finger friendly sized buttons that almost looks like the ones we've seen on TouchWiz phones. When you get to the main menu it has a nice transition effect uh, which is also utilized in various applications uh, on the device. It runs really smooth and responsive, navigating was, isn't a problem on the phone. Uh, it doesn't have as much personalization that a full TouchWiz device has. Uh, the only thing you can modify in the home screen is the wallpaper and the uh, clock type. It doesn't have the depth as we said that a uh, TouchWiz device offer. We were taken back with the uh, performance we got out of the Samsung Flight which is with its uh, messaging capabilities. When you do send a message you could utilize a variety of different um, input methods for example the keypad here for a more traditional way of texting or you could use the handwriting recognition which works well but not really the, the most convenient way of um, sending a message and finally when we use the uh, portrait QWERTY keyboard we noticed that there was a noticeable lag when you start to speed type. After getting comfortable with the keys when you start typing away really fast we did notice that it had a hard time catching up with what we were doing and on top of that uh, sometimes it didn't it didn't uh, recognize our presses which became extremely frustrating. Thankfully we're starting to see more AT&T phones utilize a pretty good mobile email application. When you run it on the, on the Samsung flight it's the same thing we saw previously on the Mythic where it gives you a listing of common email providers if yours not on there you could simply just use the other option and put in your email address and password from there it'll automatically set it up or in some cases it might it may ask for the email server addresses it works well as we said and uh, it doesn't offer the depth that other applications offer but it works pretty good on this device we're glad to say that the web browsing experience is pretty good on the uh, Samsung flight thanks to the Opera mini browser that's loaded on here Complex websites like ours took roughly under 30 seconds to completely load, and when you double tap something, it'll give you a zoomed in view. Scrolling isn't a problem, it runs really smooth when you're going left and right, and on top of that, paid the uh, text and also pictures renders almost instantaneously. So really ha glad with the uh, performance that we got out of the uh, Samsung flight. Both the video and music players on the Samsung flight are the same exact ones we've seen on other TouchWiz handsets. 
and the music player itself will display your album cover, your track, your artist, and also the buttons for your for your forward, reverse, and pause. If you exit back to the home screen or press the end button, it will continue to play in the background and display the uh, mini player. Sound from the speakerphone was uh, pretty loud, but if you do set it to its highest setting, it did tend to uh, produce some crackling. There really isn't much to say about the Samsung Flight's uh, picture-taking quality. Images lacked fine detail. On top of that, Im the uh, colors were really bland. And um, when you did use the uh, video recording on the handset, it only had a maximum resolution of 320 by 240. Granted, it was a little bit smooth, even for 15 frames per second. It still lacked any good detail, and at the same time, colors will really look washed out. Using the flight to make phone calls, we did notice that the speaker was on the weaker side, so it made it really difficult to hear our callers. On our end, voices did sound unnatural. On our caller's end, though, they did notice there was some background noise. When we did use the speakerphone, we got pretty much the same experience, except that um, we did sound a little bit distant, and callers stated that they, we had to speak up a little bit more. When you do place on this high setting, it will tend to crackle. Now, the great thing about the uh, device is its battery life. You managed to get five days use of normal use uh, on the handset before having to recharge. That included mostly phone calls, heavy text messaging, and occasional web browsing. So we definitely saw it excel in that area. We didn't have any problems with retaining signal strength. It had a pretty good connection to AT&T's network and didn't have any drop calls. A phone like the Samsung Flight with its touch screen and also slide out QWERTY keyboard may look good on paper. But the typing experience we got out of it really hindered us from using it. Specifically, the laggy performance when using the QWERTY, and on top of that, it had a difficult time catching up with our speed typing. Even at times, it didn't even recognize our presses. So in an area where text messaging is key for a device like this, it really falters in that aspect. We'd probably recommend other devices like the Motorola Karma for a better experience. If you want to check it out, you can read up on our in-depth review at phonerena.com.